thank you so much for joining us on Showcase today, Mary-Kate. How hard is it to find the owner of a stolen painting? It can be very difficult, especially when we're speaking about Nazi looted art. Often, not only art objects and cultural property was looted from victims during the war and the Holocaust, but documentation was removed. So it can be difficult to demonstrate the ownership of an object, even if a family believes they have a valid claim. Well, Mary-Kate, can you tell me an example of a success story of someone uh, retrieving their looted painting? I've worked on a number of restitution cases working together with museums, where the museum and the heirs of the victim have collaborated in the research process, trying to discover the exact circumstances of an object's ownership and indeed of its theft from the collector or the institution. And when they work collaboratively in this way, it can be a much better process to discover the history of those objects that can lead to fairer and more just solutions for both parties. So can you give me an example of one specific situation where someone retrieved one of their paintings or artworks? Yes, I worked on a case a number of years ago with a museum in Norway, and there was an object by the painter Henry Matisse that was in their collection, and that was restituted to the heirs of a French collector and art dealer, and that was a successful restitution after a number of years investigating the history of the painting and working together with the museum. Well, wow. Okay, so why did the Nazis find artworks so important enough to loot and oftentimes display? Art was a very important part of Nazi cultural policy. And in particular, uh, Hitler and some of the other Nazi elite, including Hermann Goering, were themselves very avid art collectors. So they were interested in these works of art from a private perspective, but also for acquiring objects for the German state. So they saw the occupation of nations across Europe as an opportunity to acquire artwork they felt was desirable. So this is artwork that is conservative, artwork that is classical, that is not radical in any way, in which you see impulses of the heroic character and you don't have any kind of um, modern impulses or abstract impulses, art that can be understood by the common person. And so mm -hmm. they saw this as an opportunity, especially in occupying uh, different states, to loot their museums. But on the other hand, they also saw the, the advantage of, uh, of looting individual collectors and dealers in occupied territories, including in France. And that has to be looked at in a different light because that was part of the systematic dispossession and systematic persecution of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And taking away their cultural property was an arm of this effort. Okay, so they also destroyed a lot of works as well, didn't they? There are some instances where the Nazis did seek to destroy cultural property when it wasn't in line with their policies. They also engaged in a uh, dispossession of their own museums, removing art and cultural objects that were not in line with what they thought was good taste. These are objects that were modern, that were abstract, or that were created by Jewish artists or artists that were left wing, uh, or indeed artists that in some way did not fit into what the Nazi ideal was. Was. So when they removed these objects from the German state museums, in some instances they were destroyed. In other instances, the value of these objects on an international market was understood, and they sought to sell these either in Switzerland or in other, in other venues so that they could liquidate these assets and either acquire art they thought that was more desirable or indeed use this money for the war effort. Well, Mary-Kate, how was the Louvre able to get their hands on all these looted artworks? So these objects, there are 31 objects that are currently being displayed in the Louvre exhibition, and they constitute a part of originally 60,000 works of art and cultural property that were repatriated to the French state following the war. Now, of those 60,000, about 45,000 were successfully returned to their rightful owners by the French state immediately following the war, and then a number of objects remained unclaimed. And so these 31 are part of those unclaimed objects that are stored between the Louvre and also the other French 
museums. And it's an effort on the part of the French state to show these objects and to demonstrate an effort to try to identify owners where they can be identified. Obviously, one of the major issues is that this exhibition is coming 70 years after these objects were taken from their rightful owners, and many of those owners will have passed away mm -hmm. or not have access to the documentation they may need to demonstrate a claim on these objects. So that is the problem, although this is an admirable effort. Yes, Mary-Kate Cleary, thank you so much for that great insight. It was a pleasure having you on Showcase today.